uh, we were discussing the static chain pointer and uh, notice that uh, if a block B is active, meaning that its activation record is on the stack, then also the blocks enclosing B must be active and therefore th they can be located on the stack. What, what, what does this really mean? Um, if, um, well, for example here, if block uh, C is active, then the one that is enclosing C, which is block B, must also be active, because we can't be running C unless we're running B as well. And uh, same holds for this function, the function phi here. If that one is active, then the enclosing block, which is block B, must be active as well. We cannot call the function phi outside block B. So block B must already be active. So keeping that in mind, we always must be able to find the correct activation record on the stack for a uh, reference to a non-local variable. So in our case, for a reference to this x or a reference to this y. So a must be, for example, running. A must be active in order for B to be active. Which means then, inside phi, it's absolutely certain that uh, A is active, and therefore we must be able to find the correct activation record that holds the declaration or the association of this name Y to a, to a um, memory location which is the one up, up in a block A. Uh, so the, we say, we're basically saying that there exists a static chain which is formed from the various static chain pointers used to represent the static nesting structure of the blocks. So we just follow this static chain pointer. We are basically following a, a tra or traveling through a, a static chain which uh, represent the nesting in the original source program because phi is nested within b and b is nested within a so let's look at another example here we have uh, many blocks here we have block a we have block B, which is nested inside A. We have block C, which is nested inside A also. And then we have blocks D and E, both of which are nested inside block C. And if we consider the, the following call, A calls B, B calls C, C calls D, D calls E, and E calls C. So we have a, a we have a, an implicit recursion here because C is being called again here. So how does the stack look like after this? A calls B, B calls C, D, C calls D, D calls E, and E calls C. Well, we have activation records on the stack for A, B, C, D, E, C. You notice that these activation records uh, mirror the the order of the calls and the function of the dynamic pointers the dynamic chain pointers was exactly to point from one activation record to the other to the previous activation record so if we follow the dynamic chain pointers or the dynamic chain we are basically um, uh, following the order of the calls but the static chain pointers, they represent something different. They represent the static nesting of the, of the uh, functions. So we have a, a static chain pointers that points from C to A. And why is that? Because block C is nested within A. The enclosing block for C is A. We have a static chain pointer that goes from E to C, 
from E to C because E is nested within C. We have a, a static chain pointer from D to C because D is also nested within C. And we have a static chain pointer from B to A because B is nested within A or the enclosing block for B is A. So one of the functions of the runtime management is to set this static chain pointer correctly. And this is performed by these uh, different uh, uh, codes that we talked about earlier. Remember this call-in sequence and the prolog and the epilog. And this could be carried out differently between implementations, but the most common approach is that when a new block is entered, the caller calculates the static chain pointer uh, for the callee and passes it to the to the callee, to the called routine. So the caller is the one that is uh, the responsible for calculating this static chain pointer, passes it to the called routine, and then the called routine or the callee will set the static chain pointer in, in, its, uh, in a particular place in the activation record. Now, there are really two cases here that we should consider when we're talking about calculating the static chain. So let's first imagine that the called routine is external to the caller. What do we mean by this? Well, it's best to, to give an example here. If the called routine is external to the caller, it means that the called routine is not declared inside uh, the same block. So here we have a block A which declares uh, the function phi, then we have a block B which is nested inside A, which has another block C in nest nested inside B, and it inside block C we call phi. So the phi function is external to the caller because it's not declared in the same sc uh, scope. It's not declared in the same block. So it, it's declared in a, in a different block, in a, we might say in a non-local uh, non block. Uh, so it's, it, uh, well, not a non-local block, it's, it's really a non-local reference. It's a reference to something that is external. So by the visibility rules that we have discussed, the called routine must then be located in an outer block, which includes the caller's block. So if I'm able to, refer to a function named phi here and phi is not uh, declared in the in the same block it must be declared in um, in an outer block which uh, uh, includes the color blocks so a is declared in a uh, a does includes the phi function and A does include B, and it actually includes C as well. So, keeping that in mind, the activation record for such an outer block, in our case block A, must be already stored on the stack. Because there's no way that we can execute the code here, the call to function phi, unless A is, uh, is uh, uh, running as well. The function A is running as well. Now, uh, let's now assume that uh, among the caller and the called routines, there are k levels of nesting in the program structure. That means when we're saying nesting, we could say that A is at level 1, uh, B is at level uh, 2, and C is at level 3. So that would be the nesting level. And if the caller is located on nesting level n, and the called routine is on level m, then we can record this difference, or we can find out this difference, k is equal to n minus m. And this difference, or this value of k, can actually be determined by the compiler, because notice that this only depends on the static structure of the program. 
when we look at this program here, this uh, simple example here, uh, the compiler can find out the different uh, the difference between the nesting values. If C has nesting three, then uh, A has nesting one, and this difference uh, three minus one is two, and this can be computed at compile time just by analyzing the uh, source program. Uh, and if and given that the caller can then calculate the static chain pointer for the called procedure simply by dereferencing its own static chain pointer k times so it will actually just run k steps along its own static chain so in our case the, we are saying that the caller, which is block C, will calculate the static chain pointer for the callee, which is in this case phi, and it will pass it to the function phi. And how does it calculate it? Well, it calculates it as a difference between the nesting levels. C has nesting level 3, um, phi, which is at nesting level 1, has has uh, which is sorry phi which is uh, inside block a and has nesting level one, and then the difference three minus one is two, so c will travel two steps along its static chain, along its static chain, and what does it find there? If it follows two steps, it goes first to B, because B is the enclosing parent for C, and then from B to A, because A is the, is the enclosing parent for B. So when it hits A, that one is the correct activation record for, uh, uh, for the static parent of the function phi. And the function phi then will make its own static chain pointer point to A. So C, the block C, is able to calculate the static chain pointer, the correct static chain pointer for the function phi. So this was uh, uh, the first possibility that. Uh, uh, the cold routine was external to the caller. The other uh, possibility is that the cold routine is inside the caller. Uh, so that would be the, the case here. We have a block A which declares the function phi, and inside block A we call the function phi. So the called function here is not external to the caller, it's actually in the same block. And then the static chain pointer of the cold routine of, of phi must point to the caller's activation record. It must point to A. So we are inside A, we're calling a function which is inside the same block, and the static chain pointer of phi must then be the caller's, active, uh, the caller's uh, static chain pointer. So the caller can simply pass to the called routine a pointer to its own activation record. So it doesn't have to calculate any nesting uh, or any differences between nesting levels, it just passes its own static chain pointer. That will be the correct static chain pointer for phi, because the called routine is inside the caller. So what are we saying? We're saying that this nesting level distance can be calculated statically, statically meaning at compile time. And this is, is what allows uh, the re resolution of non-local references at runtime without having to perform any name search in the activation record on the stack. Remember, we're still talking about static scope here. Uh, so we're, we're not doing any name searches. We don't have to travel through the dynamic chains and try to find the correct uh, activation record that holds the correct association. We just travel through the static chain. So to find the activation record containing the memory space for a non-local X, it suffices to start at the current activation record and follow the starting chain for a number of links equal to this value of the distance. 
for a number of links which is equal to the value of the distance. You know, remember, we had this distance um, between the nesting levels. Um, and inside the activation record that is found, we have this memory location for x. And this is something that can be computed at compile time. And then at the runtime, this uh, distance can be traveled by going through the static chain. And where do we find the exact location for x? Well, it's using some offset with respect to the activation record pointer. Remember that this is something that we have talked about earlier, that the activation record pointer points to a fixed area in the activation record, and then the local variables are kept in, a, uh, in some offset from this um, pointer. So the first declared local variable comes in the first space, the second declared local variable comes in the second space, and so on. So we can use the offset there. Or the compiler actually can, you know, generate uh, uh, the offset, calculate this offset so it can be uh, referenced at the runtime. So finally, let's say a few words about dynamic scope. Remember that we 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 earlier said that dynamic scope uh, is uh, has disappeared from most of the contemporary programming languages it's still uh, um, it existed in some version of lisp at the begin to begin with it uh, exists in, in perl where you can actually tell perl whether you want to use dynamic scope or static scope but if you have dynamic scope then you don't really need a static chain pointer because the static chain pointer is, is uh, supposed to give you information or point to an activation record where you have an association for a non-local reference. But in a dynamically scoped language, language the reference to a non-local variable is always in the first active activation record that precedes the current one. So we can just use the dynamic chain pointer to search for a reference to a non-local variable. Uh, let's just recall uh, an example that we had earlier when we were talking about dynamic scope. Here is that example. We had, a, we had the different values uh, printed here, depending on the, on the scope rule. And in the case of dynamic scope, uh, B, well, A first runs and declares its own local variable X here. Then B starts running, the block B, and it has its own local variable X as well, and then it calls phi. Now, phi has a reference to a non-local variable, and the question was, what? where is the association? Where is the correct association for this um, non-local variable? Well, if it's dynamic scope, we're saying it's in the first active activation record. Which one is the first active one? Well, that's the one for B, because B is the one that called phi. So a reference to X inside phi is the reference to the local variable X declared in B. So in dynamic scope, how would we find that variable? Well, we would simply travel the dynamic chain to find it. However, even though this is simpler, because we don't need a static chain pointer, it costs more because uh, the names of the variable must be stored in the activation records. So in order to find this x where we refer it to re refer to it inside phi, we have to do a name search. So we have to travel through the dynamic chain to find to which points to B, to block B, and find search for the name X. If it's not there, we go from the dynamic chain pointer in the activation record B 
to the activation record for A and do a name search there. Is X defined there? So that's the cost. We have to um, somehow store the names of the variables inside the activation records or in some other external data structure. And we have to do this name search of, at runtime uh, traveling through the dynamic chains until we find the correct activation record. Whereas in, in the static scope, we travel an exact distance through the static chain, and that distance is computable at compile time. 